Doppelganger Sam My name is Sam. I'm having a really lousy day. It was Wednesday, which usually is a very fun day for me. You see, every Wednesday on my lunch break, my wife Kristen meets me in front of a hotel near my office. We rent a room and have sex like bunnies for an hour, and then I go back to work. On this day, my wife never showed. This was unusual. We had been doing this adventurous rendezvous consistently for the past two years, and neither of us ever missed a day. I checked my watch. I was running about ten minutes late, but it wasn't the first time I was a little bit tardy. She never bailed out in the past. I called her cell phone, but it went straight to voicemail. Strange. I was feeling blue since the sex romp rug had been pulled out from under me, so I crossed the street to the movie theater. A goofball comedy that I had been dying to see was just starting. That would cheer me up. It had a runtime of just 80 minutes. Sure, I'd be a little late returning to the office from lunch, but honestly, this was the norm for me. Especially on Wednesdays. <laughs> I did have an important report that was due when I returned, but I just had to dot some I's and cross some T's, so screw it. Goofball comedy, here I come. The movie did the trick and it lightened my mood. Once it concluded, I hurried across the street back to my office. I work for a major manufacturing corporation based out of Atlanta, Georgia. I'm the office clown. I am always joking around and playing practical jokes on my coworkers. The job is so tedious, I have to do something to break the monotony or I'd go nuts. I hurried to the office building, took the elevator up to my office floor, and then attempted to discreetly meander over to my desk in hopes that nobody would recognize that I was coming back from lunch late. Boy, did that plan fail. My boss, Miss Peggy, spotted me from across the room and screamed. Not a scream of anger, but a scream of fear. It's him. He's back. Call security. Call security. She rushed into her office and shut the door behind her. I then spotted my friends Paul and Jeffrey. They were staring at me with their mouths agape. Jeffrey finally spoke up. Wow, the balls on this guy. Before I could question him as to what he meant by that statement, I found myself being whisked away by two burly security guards. What, what the hell is going on? One of the guards snapped at me. You've been fired and banned from this office complex. Fired for what? If we see you here again, we'll call the police and have you arrested for trespassing. With that, they tossed me out of the building. What the hell was happening? I'd give Jeffrey a call later that night to see if I could get the gist of what happened. Until then, I just tried to relax a bit at home. When I got home, I noticed a cab sitting outside the house at the curb. What was that about? I entered the front door and was met by my wife, Kristen. She was in a rush as she slipped her shoes on. She seemed pissed. Then I noticed she was carrying a suitcase. Kristen, what's wrong? What are you doing? She stared daggers at me as she tied her shoes. Oh, don't even play your little games with me. You crossed the line earlier, asshole. We are through. She pushed her way past me and jerked open the door. I tried to stop her. Kristen, I have no idea what you're talking about. That's as much as I could say before she turned around, slapped me, and then hurried to the cab in a huff. I watched on as the cab drove off into the distance. Was this some kind of a joke? Had everyone lost their minds? I wasn't even sure where to begin to try to decipher the unusual happenings taking place that day, but a nice stiff shot of bourbon seemed like a good place to start. One drink turned into two. Two turned into eight. 
I was pretty well gassed when the cops kicked my door in. I turned my head to see the blurry horde of police officers rushing at me with their guns drawn. Freeze, you son of a bitch! My words were slurred as I shouted out, what, what are you doing? Sam Cohen, you're under arrest for murder. I was booked and thrown into a cell. It wasn't until the next morning, when I sobered up, that my attorney arrived and clued me in as to what was happening. He slid a picture of a young woman with long blonde hair and a pretty smile in front of me. Do you know this girl? I shook my head no. That's Daria Simmons. She was brutally murdered last night. You've been arrested for that murder. I was in utter shock. I have never seen that girl before in my life. I have no idea who that is. Why? Why have they arrested me for this? Why do they think I did this? There was a small television monitor in the corner of the room. My attorney got up and pressed a button. Please explain this. It was security footage from behind some building. It showed the young woman, Daria Simmons, walking toward a car. Suddenly, a man rushed her from behind, knocked her to the ground, and then bludgeoned her to death with his fist. I felt sick. I had to fight back the vomit. I had never watched someone be murdered before. I was disgusted. I froze and could feel the blood drain from my face when the killer stood up. He was ignorant to there being video surveillance in the area and inadvertently turned directly toward the camera, giving everyone a crystal clear image of his face. Beyond a shadow of a doubt, it was me. Doppelganger. Clyde. My name is Clyde. I'm having a really weird day. I was in Atlanta for business. I was entering the hotel I had a room booked at when I was stopped by a voluptuous woman in a seductive dress. Hello, big boy. Wanna have a little fun? She started twirling her hair as she looked me up and down. Before I could even respond, she grabbed me by the arm, whizzed me up to her room, and we spent the next hour having wild sex. Boy, the hookers in Atlanta were mighty aggressive. We hadn't even negotiated a price. After our session, I cleaned up, got dressed, and handed her a $100 bill. She took the money and stared at it for a moment and then looked up at me in anger. This isn't funny. I shrugged. Well, how much do you want? Somehow that statement flamed the inferno of her anger. Seriously, Sam, this is not funny. I took out another hundred bucks and tossed it at her. That's all you're getting, whore. I don't have time for games. She seemed offended. A whore. Offended. <laughs> that was a new one. Go to hell, Sam. Go to hell. Shut up, you stupid slut. I roughly escorted her out of my room, slammed the door in her face, and walked away. Sam? Why did she keep calling me Sam? I thought the proper lingo for a hooker's customer was a John. When had they changed it to a Sam? Whatever. I had business to attend to. I left the hotel room and started walking down the crowded Atlanta street. As I passed by a large office building, two men rushed outside and pulled me into the building while repeating, Did you finish the Mueller report? Tell us you finished the Mueller report! Who were these jerks? What did they want? They kept going on and on about the Mueller report, whatever the hell that was, and hurried me into the elevator. Say you finished the Mueller report! Say it! Say it! I shrugged. Okay, I finished the Mueller report. I didn't know what was happening, but when I said that, they both seemed relieved and started patting me on the back. Oh, thank God. Boss bitch was going to have all our nuts in a sling if you didn't have that thing finished. What was this? Was this a prank? Was this some kind of bastard child of candid camera? 
There was a loud ding and the elevator doors opened. A tall woman with beady eyes, a constant scowl, and a perm stood at the elevator doors glaring at us. I had to assume this was boss bitch. Well, if it isn't the three stooges. The other two men instantly became submissive to the lanky woman. They started in with, oh, Miss Peggy this, and oh, Miss Peggy that. It was a pathetic sight, but it was me that Miss Peggy had settled her gaze on. Tell me you have the Mueller report. I continued to play along. Okay, I have the Mueller report. She held out her bony hand. Give it to me. I looked around. All eyes were on me. It was tense in this office. It was then that I realized this wasn't a joke. I let out a little chuckle. <laughs> oh, I think I see what's going on here. You seem to have me confused with somebody else. This infuriated Miss Peggy. Do not joke with me, mister. You want to play your little games with your pathetic peon peers? Go right ahead. But don't you dare try to bring me down to your level with your childish antics. I held up my hand. Seriously, who exactly do you think I am? That question made boss bitch blow her top. I think you are a pitiful little man who has never mentally matured beyond adolescence. She began sharply poking her skeletal finger into my chest. Mark my words, you puny, piteous bastard. If you make one more joke in my presence, I will have security throw you out of this building on your low-life ass. I grabbed her by the throat and pulled her face close to mine. Listen to me, lady. You better hope I never see you again. If I do, I'll lop your head off. Do you understand me? Do you, Miss Piggy? Her expression was laced with fear as she nodded her head profusely. I shoved her to the ground and watched her face transform into a mix of terror, shock, and embarrassment. I blew her a kiss before I left the office. Now, onto that business I needed to attend to. Did I mention that my business is killing people? That's what I came to Atlanta to do. Whenever I get the urge to kill, I fly to a city that I rarely visit and pick a victim I have no association with. The combination of these things makes it very difficult for the cops to catch on to me. On this evening, I went to a loud club with reverberating bass and flashing lights. I picked out my victim quickly, a very young girl with blonde hair and a pretty smile. There was no way she was 21. She must have gotten in with a fake ID. I watched her as she danced the night away, twerking up against every man who got within inches of her. She left the club all by herself. Big mistake. After finishing my business, I took the red-eye flight home. <sighs> it was a strange day indeed.